up. <laughs> I've been awake for like half an hour. Yeah, something like that. And um, and I'm anemic. Hey, Mossy. Uh, yeah. I ran out of uh my iron supplements like last week, and I didn't even. Yeah, that would explain the headaches. That would explain the the fatigue. That would explain why I woke up dizzy today. Um, if you're wondering why I get anemic, I don't know. My family gets anemic easily. Some sort of genetic component. Don't know. Uh, despite all the red meat I eat, I get anemic. So, um, yeah, it's one of those things I've just had to... I figured it out a bunch of years ago. Um, I ended up going to the ER one time and had a bunch of blood work done. And doctor comes out and says, can't find anything wrong. I fucking, I'm like, can I see the blood work? She hands me the, the, the lab results. And literally my ferritin levels were low. I'm like, um, you know what? Never mind. I, I have my answer. Go on about your day. <sighs> Cassidy, yeah, yeah. I, I, honestly, Cassidy, I think it has something to do with chronic illness. I, 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 in my case at least. Um, hi, Kezzy and Kezzy's people. Um, I have six months to my iron before she shoves chicken down my throat for context. I'm vegetarian. The chicken won't help, Mossy. Um, and if you need an iron supplement, I've got a good recommendation. Um, but yeah. Um, yeah, it's like that. So, I did a, a like a staggered double dose today. Um, um, here, I'll get it to you. Uh, give me a sec, and I'll find it for you. Um, mossy, 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 mossy. Let's see. I'm just gonna send you a whisper on um, Twitch. There you go. Um, there you go, Mossy. You can get it elsewhere, but I just sent you that link. Um, really, really good absorption on it. Um, you're welcome. Yeah, as you get older, it gets it gets more difficult to absorb iron gastrointestinally anyway and then chronic illness fucking makes it even more difficult it's a whole fucking thing uh, it could have been rev yeah it could have been uh, apparently I got um, so Adia uh, fucking while while we were while we were here um, after the stream I gave Adia a couple of slugs of um, whiskey uh, McAllen's um and we ate some watermelon later in the night. Um, and then I took Adia to the airport. And apparently she, like, ran to the gate. And she sent me a, a DM on Discord saying, Never ever drink booze, eat olives, and watermelon, and then book it across two airport terminals. It doesn't end well. So, I think Adia ended up puking her guts up in the airport bathroom or on the airplane. I don't know. Um, but yeah, that, that was a thing that happened. Um, no, apparently, apparently she managed to make it there. Rev, apparently she managed to make it there. Are you ready? Oh. <sighs> Just I'm I'm worn I'm worn down. I mean this that's part of being anemic. Um so yeah, I'm sort of just worn down. Muscles ache a little bit. Uh woke up dizzy uh earlier in the day, like two PM my time. Um woke up uh woke up dizzy, um and I was like, Oh, I know what this is. 
Like I've I've had this happen before. I'm like I stopped taking my iron supplements. Like I I knew immediately. Like uh, so I know um I know my mom takes the same ones I do cuz I have good taste in stuff. So when she needed iron supplements a couple of years back, I was like, you know, take these. Um so I knew she did those were the ones. So I rated her stash. I'm like, I'm just fucking take these until I get my own again um which reminds me um I need to order them um Um, yes, yes, Rev, for sure, for sure, 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 um, mm. oh, cracks, thank you, I don't know, my sixth sense is off, Karina, my day is off, I am off, I, I don't know, uh, I'm hoping not, um, 5-hydroxytryptophan. Joey, it's been a lot of years since I've had to take some 5-HTP. used to use it uh, for preloading and postloading um, uh, ecstasy, MDMA. Um, Rocket, that's... Um, I do believe that's a... a uh, I, well, isn't that Dr. Heem? Yeah, like... That's Dr. Heemed out. Like, that's fucking one of his things. Um, thank you, Kez. Um, it is, Joey. It is. Uh, good night, Kez. Sleep well. I hope you feel better. Um, yeah, so, I don't know. We'll see. I honestly was thinking about just calling it and just doing the, um, <clears throat> uh, the bad movie night. Uh, over on Discord and just not even doing a stream. Like, legitimately, I, I felt like, I was like, eh. um, oh, I don't know. I have no idea, Wayne. Stay safe, Joey. You're a big boy. Um, Bobby. I got to tell you, the first thing that popped in my head, Bobby, was not um, like D&D &D or 40K models when you asked that question. First thing that popped into my head was, yeah. Bobby getting down. Interesting. Um... I can see that conversation between you and Cassidy. How about some anal? Sure, bend over, bitch. <laughs> oh. Oh, jeez. I don't need that kind of pressure, Crix. <laughs> um. I may have to eat during stream. I really hate eating during stream, but I do have some, like, I have a bowl of stewed black beans, some slow cooked with kombu, and kombu aids, if you, here's a tip, kids, if you cook your beans with kombu, seaweed, um, then it aids actually in the breakdown of the cellular structure of the beans, and it aids, uh, it increases absorption rates of the nutrients in the beans in the gastrointestinal tract. So, fun fact. Um, so, some black beans stewed with kombu and bay and oregano and cumin and shit like that. Um, blessed be the brain. Um, not, not this moment, Mossy. Not this moment. Um, but, yeah. I hate eating on stream. I hate eating on stream. I don't like it. I don't like. I don't like when other people do it either. Frankly, 
Um, you hate cumin? You hate cumino? How do you hate cumino, Rev? How do you, like, what do you just, like, hate Mexican food? Rev, like, that's... Dude. Um... I mean, uh, Mossy, uh, um, a little bit, just a little bit. I know enough to get my food ordered, directions to the beach, and not die on the street. That's, that's about the extent of my Spanish, like, as far as, um, my pronunciation and projection of Spanish. I can understand a little bit more than I can speak, but yeah. Well, Mossy, I, I live in Nevada and I lived in Arizona prior to this. Um, you hear a fair smattering of Spanish in this part of the world, uh, the world. So you pick up the accent. Yeah. Thank you though. Um, <laughs> cave. Fucking A cave. Um, <laughs> slash the effects of all that healthy eating by half if you're basic American. Basic bitches. Um, yeah, I, I, I couldn't imagine hating cumin. Uh, growing up on rehydrated, uh, refried beans and government cheese, my mom would always put too much cumin into beans. I love Mexican food as long as I can't taste the cumin in it at all. My mom is one of those. She, she adores cumin as a flavor. And so she will like, she'll, she'll dump, you know how most people like when they, they dose like, um, vanilla extract for recipes, it's like, put, put a 16th of a teaspoon of vanilla, vanilla extract in and people are just like, it's my mom with cumin. It's like, put, put, you know, a pinch of cumin in. And she's like, I get it. I get it. Um... cave um yeah right cassie i mean it, as long as you use it correctly it's an amazing flow uh profile um i'll get to it fuck it rice cumin seeds is yes good yum um glumino I mean, if you want to be correct, it's, you know, cumino. Cilantro. <laughs> Bobby, I, to be honest, I like most spices when you use correctly. Here's here's where I, um, I may divide the room. I have an issue with Indian food because I hate the warm spices in um, savory dishes. So, like, allspice, cinnamon, clove, nutmeg... I, I can't take those. I, I don't like the warming spices in um, in savory dishes. So Indian food, a lot of the time for me, just doesn't play. Um, now I know that's a vast like overstatement of you know Indian food. The subcontinent is huge. There's regional distinction. Some of them don't even use some of the warming spices in in, in their savory dishes. Like I get that, but what most people think of is traditional Indian fare. Yeah, can't stand it. Cinnamon, cinnamon in a savory dish. Fuck out of here. Uh, so no pho, uh, clove in the broth. <sighs> Usually the clove isn't that pronounced, Bobby. So I'm okay with it. Yeah. Um, but yeah, if 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 they throw a cinnamon stick in there too into the broth, I'm out. But most of the most of the foe around here, the clove isn't pronounced, and so I don't really notice. Um. Yeah. See, cave. I can't. Cinnamon stick and goes good in curries. I can't. I can't. Um. Yeah. The 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 warming spices in savory food just. You lose me. 
I can't do it. Um, yeah, there's a bunch of fucking the North African food markets that I, I just, it's like, oh, can't do it. Um, especially if you actually have um, real cinnamon, Mossy. Jesus. What are you going to use them for? Hot sauce, Bobby? Like, you make relish out of them. You're going to make salsa. You're going to make hot sauce. Or all of the above. Hot sauce. All right. Cool, cool, cool. Oh. Yeah. I've been informed that... I've just been informed that generations of my ancestors all gasped in horror. Fair enough. Um, sorry. I mean, there's, there's stuff I eat that probably would freak a lot of people out. So I get it. Like, I mean, it's, you know, I draw the line at like cinnamon in a broth. Um, but I'm fine with like raw beef and shit like that. Whatever. Um, Good on you, Cassidy. I've even had raw pork before. Don't, don't, don't go to the store and buy pork and think you can eat it raw, kids. That's not a thing you can do. But there are preparations for raw pork that you can, you can consume. But there's many, many stipulations on that. Um, yeah, don't, don't, don't just run out and do that. Um, ears, maybe I draw the line at animal heads and genitalia. Oh, I've had, um, I've had bull's penis, um, in soup. I've had multiple types of testicle. They tend to just be creamy and in, uh, innocuous for the most part. Um, some of the smaller ones get pretty gamey, though. Um, ears, pig ears, um, long cooked, put in a sandwich. Um, head cheese. Um, yeah. Have ever had chicken sashimi? Weirdly okay. Um, no, I haven't, but I'm aware of it, actually. Um, yeah, I mean, head cheese is just a terrine. That's, that's all head cheese is. It's just a face terrine. <laughs> so if you ever go to a French restaurant and they, you know, a fucking, and they have terrine on the menu, it's, it's head cheese for all intents and purposes. Um, <clears throat> Marcus, um, yeah, no, those those are the those are the bits you should be eating, like the off cuts, the off all, the you know those sorts of things. Uh, wither, some do, yes. Um, the eye isn't super edible, but the gelatinous, uh, the vitreous inside is a delicacy in some parts of the world and in some dishes. Yeah, um, it is it is an option depending on where you may be. So yeah, I mean that's. That's one of those, <clears throat> not to make it overly political, but this is, you know, we're on politics right now. Um, food is highly political. And the waste that the sort of Western societies produce from the offcuts, as it were, is significant. And one of the things that you can go to mitigating and reducing your carbon footprint and your environmental footprint as a whole is... Um, and be more democratic and equitable in your food consumption is to start to learn how to cook and consume those pieces that you probably didn't grow up eating unless you were super poor. Kez, well, welcome back. Um, I 
yeah, you use, okay, most people use Kasha when they're using cinnamon. This is why I said real cinnamon. <laughs> yeah, most most people use Kasha. Um, let me get you some images. Okay, so the one on the right is Kasha. The one on the left is probably Ceylon cinnamon. Yeah, Marcus. It's it's usually it's usually Ceylon. There's there's one other option, but yeah. Yeah, most people have not had real cinnamon. They've they've been consuming cashew their their entire life. So Um if you think cuisine stops in France or Italy, you're being cheated. People steps off those box. Um, there was a famous, I forget his name. There's a famous Spanish chef who had Michelin stars. He had fame and fortune and he left it all behind and he went to bumfuck nowhere, Argentina um into like the wilds and now he does the most rustic cooking and i still remember the episode years and years ago it may have been a cook's tour it may not have even been no reservations with anthony bourdain it may have been a cook's tour which is prior to he went and hunted him down he's like why did you leave it all behind man why'd you leave it behind he said, you had everything. And behind them is a giant pile of wood. And over it is an entire cow splayed and spot spatchcocked like a chicken would be on a giant metal grate, just cooking for hours, hours and hours over this fire. And they're just chilling in front of it, having a beer. And Tony asks him, why'd you leave it behind? You, you had everything. You had your stars, you had a bespoke restaurant, you had investors, you had people from all over the globe coming to you for for food. So what, what happened? I still remember him looking at, this was formative. This was formative for me. He looked at Tony Bourdain and he said, I couldn't torture the food anymore. So that's simple. He said, I couldn't torture the food. He said, you see that? That's food. He said, tweezers, taking little microgreens and placing them on the plate so somebody could pay $300 for a dish. He said, that's not cooking. For me, that was a hugely formative moment. A, a world-class chef who had hay for twos, who had everything. He had every every success that a chef can point to. Multiple Michelin stars, right? A fucking, like, a bespoke restaurant built just for him. Everything. And he just left it all behind just to cook whole cows over fire in South America. I was like, I get that. I feel that. I feel it in my soul. Ah, uh, I can't cook, but I can bake. Who else does baking? Oh, fucking bakers. God damn. Cooking is an art. Baking is a science. Um, 
not denigrating it, not denigrating science, not placing one above the other. I'm just saying it's a distinction. And when it comes to the kitchen, I am not a scientist. I'm an artist. Um, Marcus, who knows? Um, yeah, I, I, you know, this is, this is my cooking style right there. If, if you, if you, if you get it, you get it. That's my cooking style. Grandma's. Grandma's. Um, of course he does weather. South America is an amazing place. It's an amazing place. Yeah. Um, I've never had the inclination to spend time in Europe. Like, a lot of Americans get that call to Europe. They, they, they do the, like, gap year. And they want to, you know, travel from England and France and Germany and Italy and Spain. I've never had that, that inclination. But, you know, South America has always spoken to my soul. Um, I'm too bad at cooking or baking, but I'm not really good at either. I'm, a, I'm an okay baker. I'm an okay baker. I can I can bake you a cake. I can bake you cookies. Um, I can I I'm an okay baker. I'm not going to produce anything that is mind blowing. Um, but as far as cooking goes, yeah, I can make some stuff that you'll remember. Straight up. Like I I've been cooking three meals a day usually for a decade now. Right. And before that, when I was, you know, I started cooking for my house as a teenager when I was in high school. I cooked celebratory meals for everybody. I cooked. I've I've put I've put professional levels of time in the kitchen. Right. Like I, I've put enough time in the kitchen that. Yeah. Yeah, I, I, I can hang. Right. Like. Um, Ireland, Ireland could be interesting for me. Ireland and Scotland could be interesting for me. I could, I could, I could hang with them. Um, this is where I came from in Europe, but this is where I want to eat in Nigeria, Egypt, and Sudan to understand those cultures. Fair enough. Um, <clears throat> one of the biggest crimes to humanity, in my opinion, is the ability for food companies to lie, manipulate, and change our food without having to be honest and clear about what was done. Our food has been converted into food products without focusing on health or long-term outcomes. I, I agree. Um, the acronym for American food um, is SAD. For real. Um, the standard American diet. This is what dietitians call it. SAD. It's fucking ridiculous. But, yeah. Um, I mean, y'all know me. Like, some of you do, at least. I grew up with organic, like, organic before organic was organic, right? Like, back in the day. Like, just this is just how we used to grow shit, right? Um, organic gardens, multiple gardens, um, fields, a greenhouse, ponds, stocked ponds like not even stocked they were just because we had streams and rivers running into them as well um ponds full of stuff surrounded by you know cattle dairy farms in vermont like that's just how i grew up like i didn't know any different um yeah wild wild fruit bushes of you know blueberries and blackberries and raspberries and the most amazing forest strawberries. If you've never picked a, a strawberry off of a forest floor in New England, I I don't even know how to describe that to you. Um, yeah, that's just how I grew up. Um, so, yeah. I, I have a very low tolerance level for bullshit food. Yeah, <laughs> Montpellier, Montpellier. Um, Marcus, yeah, Montpelier. It's yeah, in Vermont it's Montpelier, but Montpelier. Um, it is I I would be okay with renaming it like and using the correct pronunciation. Um <clears throat> Yeah, Rev, you grew up like a fucking hippie, so like you get it. 
Um, Rev, that is actually true. Um, the, the, the grain stuff. You just pulled a Richard Spencer and cleaned your room. Good on you, Caboose. Good on you. Mossy, it was amazing. It was amazing. O honestly. Um, I wish I could give everybody my childhood. Truly. It was... I don't know. Disney-esque. It was... It was... Perfect. Yeah. Um... Yeah. I... I... I mean, there's probably a couple few of you that don't know. Like, I grew up on a literal mountaintop in Vermont. We owned the mountain. I'm not kidding. We owned a fucking mountain. The entire road up the mountain was our driveway. It was a bitch in the winter. Um, admittedly. Um, but... Dead of winter? Yeah, you just stay home. Um, yeah. Yeah, in some sense. It really did. It kind of, it kind of fucked me up a little bit, to be, to be perfectly honest. Um, <laughs> nice, Rev. Um, yeah, we, we owned a mountain. Um, it was a property built by a doctor whom my mom knew, and he was looking to offload it. And we bought it. Um, so yeah, that's, that's where I grew up. That was my childhood was a mountain in the mountains, in the green mountains of Vermont. Um, when I look, when I looked out my window, mountain ranges, I didn't see anything. I saw nothing but untouched, unspoiled nature. I did not see people. I did not see headlights. I did not see town lights. I did not see any buildings. I saw mountains. Our windowsills and our, our countertops were all locally harvested um, granite and marble from Vermont, from the area. Um, the wood was from trees on, on our mountain, right? Like it was, it was like that. Um, yeah, I had one of those childhoods and it's, it, it kind of fucked me in a lot of ways. My standards are set insanely high. Um, but in a lot of ways it prepared me to be a touchstone for y'all, for Americans. It can be done. It can be done. It's doable folks. Um, chips and gravy. <laughs> are you proudly radical? I mean, I, I yeah. Um, that's insane for somebody raised in the suburb of a major city. Intensely, yeah, it, I, I'd imagine it is, Marcus. And somebody who's spent a lot of time in the suburbs of a ma of a major city now, trust me, I, I sort of feel you. Um, Cricks, I'm sure I I couldn't eat McDonald's at this point. Um. Intensely jealous. I got a couple of pale shades of that growing up uh, that I'm grateful for. Ten miles for many stores. Oh, um, Trifelium, it was a long drive. Um, to any, to any, like to get to a supermarket, we had to drive all the way to Burlington, Vermont, like to Burlington. So it was 45 minutes to an hour, depending on weather, basically. Um, yeah. It's about an hour away for us. <laughs> We're there. Um, yeah. It was... We had fruit trees. We had... We had everything. Um, just, you know, Dollar General doesn't count, Rev. Um, yeah, it was... It was a hell of a thing. Um, my mom made everything. It was, you know, salsa, horseradish, sauerkraut, fucking, you know, all the sort of pickles and preserves and stews and, yeah. Um, 
Ocarina. Yeah. Um, yeah. I can remember having McDonald's with my father maybe a couple of times in my childhood. Egg McMuffin, hash brown, and a little, like, the little plastic, like, juice, orange juice. I can remember that a couple of times. Um, but, yeah, no more than a couple. Um, yeah. I... <laughs> It's a bunch of fucking weird memories flooding back right now, thinking about those times. So, I did well in school, like elementary, right? Like um, one time, I forget what I did. Like it, I, honestly, I think it was, I think it was right around like multiplication tables or something like that. Addition tables, maybe even. Either way, I was doing really good at something, and like to give me, um, this is this is so fucking revealing. Um, to give me a sort of like incentive to, to work towards. My mother asked me if there was anything I wanted, if I did really well on whatever the, the school assignment was. And she had these collections of tea sets. So fucking gay. How she didn't see this shit coming. How she didn't see this shit coming, right? Keep in mind, I'm, I was rough and tumble dirty filthy boy running around naked in the hills of vermont i asked her for a tea party asked her for a tea party i was like i want a tea party i wanted to use those stuff that stuff that she has like up on the shelf that i'm not allowed to touch that's what it was about more than anything else quite frankly but the inclination was there and i had no gender norms to fall back on like i was isolated to a huge extent so you know I didn't know tea parties were for girls, not boys. So I got the best of both worlds. So yeah, I had a, a one time I had a tea party as um, as a reward for some some sort of early early academic success in life. Um, yeah. Um, so I got it. Yeah, I, I still remember the tea set too. Um, floral pink pattern, uh, sort of a, a rose colored um, pink pattern. Yeah. Um, yeah, I remember making it, helping her make rose water. One end of the, one end of the, uh, the house, we, she had the most beautiful rose garden. Um, and we made rose water one year. The smell, the smell was amazing. The smell was, I, I can still, oh, heirloom roses. <sighs> they don't make it like that anymore. You do, whatever. Um, I was about to address the idiot in the room, but why bother? Um, this kid in my history class that looks at Marcus, yeah, for sure. Uh, this kid in my history class that looks like what my brain thinks you would look like as a kid, and also, yes, rose water smells amazing. I made some with my roses uh, someone gave me once. Yes. Um... I'll allow it. Fuck it. Uh, I still cherish my tea parties with my great aunt. Tea set was a cheap aluminum set, and the tea was her diet coke, but still great memories. Exactly, Patronum. Hey, chips and gravy again. What's your fucking deal? <clears throat> like, what's your major malfunction? We're having a we're having a lovely time. Stroll down memory lane, right? We we came off. Um, oh well, in that case, fuck off. You're free to change the channel. Feel free, feel free to use that freedom of choice and fuck right off. Um, so fortunate I've been raised in Alaska. Oh, I know. Um, I moved from Ventura, uh, Ventura California uh, to Fairbanks, Alaska. That's in the middle of the state of Alaska. Yep. I went from uh, gangs being the biggest fear to moose and 40 below being the biggest threat. It's the best thing that could have happened in hindsight. Yeah, it is, Chris. It is. Um... Yeah, re-engaging. I know, right? With her, I was having a lovely trip down memory lane. Talking about, you know, I mean, sure, we were coming off of the politicization of food and how we should re-democratize it and that sort of thing. Um, I 
Oh, Karina already just timed him out. Fuck him. Um. Anyway. Yeah. I had a highly privileged childhood. I had a highly privileged childhood. Um. I. I oh, man, there's a memory. Um, it is, Miz. It is. Food industry is a fuck. The fact that it's an industry is probably half of the problem, right? Um, we had this gas station, little, little convenience store, just outside of the village that I grew up near, right? Um, they had soft serve ice cream, chocolate and vanilla swirl in a cone in summer for only a couple of months, but it was local cow, it was local milk, it was fresh local milk from the dairy farm, like literally right down the way from the store. Every summer, you look forward to that. Yeah. <laughs> um. <clears throat> yeah, Rev, it takes, it takes a little bit. Cause I didn't have like, you don't realize because I was isolated, I didn't have a lot of the socialization that other people had. Like, I didn't have large friend groups. I didn't have, you know, a lot of this fucking stuff that you're like, as a kid, you really value. But as an adult, you look back and you go, Jesus fucking Christ, was I lucky. So, yeah. Um... Small town supremacy. Thank you, Gemma. Happy Breen's Day to you as well. Um, yeah, it, it, it was it was a thing. It was a thing. I wouldn't honestly. I'd give up everything I've experienced in this life to have just continued living that. Yeah. I'd I'd. I would know so much, but I'd be okay with it. Yeah. I'm just coming around, like, Cricks, I hate fish. I hate the taste of fish, but smoked salmon, like beechwood smoked salmon, like cold smoked, I'm coming around to it. Let's just put it that way. I'm coming around to it. Yeah. just right I have a I don't know him anymore but I had a childhood friend that I could look up that I, I grew up with right like he was he was one of my only real friends right out there in the wilderness um he stayed his family never moved he fucking stayed he has lived the life that I'm talking about. Yeah. I... One of these days. One of these days I'll look him up. Um, I saw him... Twenty-five years ago, maybe? Yeah. Um... Hate the taste of fish, or is it the vague implication of vagina just for glasses? No, Marcus, I, I, I legitimately hate the taste of fish. Um, I grew up in fucking cow country, right? Like, growing up in, like, landlocked Vermont like that, like that, like cattle, chicken, beef, that sort of shit is what I grew up on. Um, so, yeah, I didn't have a whole lot of exposure to fish. My family weren't huge fish eaters to start with. Um... <clears throat> So, yeah, it wasn't a formative taste. Um, so, yeah, I don't I don't like it as a flavor profile. All we had was cosmic brownies. Fair enough. Um Yeah, Gemma, I'm 
Not my thing. Little, little. Thank you for the follow. Um. Now, now high school is coming, coming back to me, Rev. Uh, <laughs> do it like we do on the Discovery Channel. Um. <sighs> Should we do some headlines? Should we do some headlines? I mean, it's uh, you know. Tell you what, let's let's pump some headlines out, and then we'll move on again. I think uh, I think it's solid uh, juxtaposition. We had a we had a nice little um, stroll down memory lane, little halcyon days of your moment. Um, Diddy, I mean, I imagine he speaks most days, Chris, but. Um, so where was that one headline? Wisconsin. That's right. Um, the the Waukesha, uh, Wisconsin uh, school board um, have opted, the school district have opted out of the federally funded. They don't even have to pay for it themselves realistically, right? It's fucking Wisconsin. So California, uh, California and New York are basically foot in the bill, right? Um, they opted out of the free and reduced priced meals. Um, so they're not doing like free lunches or free breakfast for children, for children, for fucking children. Quote, to quote one of their board members, because that may uh, end up with students becoming spoiled. Yes feeding children may end up and may cause them to be spoiled that just goes to go through with that yeah here's 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 um here's a fun one so the the woman who put this who said this and put this forward is named karen k-a-r-i-n the woman who is fighting against her tooth and nail is named Karen, K-A-R-E-N. This is Karen versus Karen. We're going to see who out Karen's each, uh, the, the other Karen. Yeah. It's the, the battle of the Karens. I, I... I hope EN wins. Let's just put it that way. Um, yep. Karen v. Karen. Battle of the century. Will the children survive or will they starve? Huh. Literally, literally talking about starving children. Like, what? I, I, what is wrong with people? How, 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 how much of a fucking bootlicker for this system do you have to be that you're like, you know what? Fuck the, fuck them kids. Let them starve. Really? Really? Is that, is that, is that what your Lord and Savior, Jeebus Christ on a fucking stick would say? Fuck them kids. Let them, let them go hungry. I'm pretty, yeah, is that, is that like what? Uh, John chapter three, verse 12. Fuck them kids. I don't even, I, I can't even, most days, I'm just like, I, I don't, I don't know where these fucking people are coming from. Mm. Yeah, we fucking talked about John Taffer's dumbass on that fucking Laura Ingram program one day for two, so yeah. Um. Yeah. Karen, may I speak with your manager since your existence upset me versus Karen, won't you think of the children who will win Sunday, Sunday, Sunday? Um Yeah. I I just I saw that and I was like, really? <laughs> Cricks and ref. Cricks and ref. Love that little banter back and forth. Um Fuck it. <laughs> I feel a revolution in the air. Oh, look what I found lying on the ground. <laughs> uh, 
kids who get free meals usually get a bag of snacks and such at school too. Hope nonprofits can help out more. I would make it a policy just to feed everybody. I don't care. Like, one, feed them food. Food. Okay, like actual food. Not that shit we currently feed them. As, as somebody who came up in the late, ni- late 90s and survived on, like, shitty, re- like, um, frozen French fries and ranch dressing, like ranch dressing for lunch through high school because fuck that other shit. That wasn't even, you know, I would eat breakfast and I would eat after school. Like, my parents would pick me up and I'd be like, let's go get food. So I was fucking hungry because fuck that other shit. I ain't eating it. So I just eat fries with ranch, like basically all through high school, straight up. Yeah. Um, so <laughs> um, yeah, we should we should one be feeding them real food. What a concept. I know. <sighs> um, and then two, we should just feed everybody. There should be no free lunch program or some shit like that. Like you apply or if you're blah, 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 blah. If there's a child in your care, if there is a, if you are a school and you run lunch, you now run breakfast and lunch and anybody who happens to be there gets served. Figure out the logistics yourself. We'll, we'll help on the back end, of course, federal programs and that sort of thing. But you need to figure out how many need fed and accommodate that. But that should just be automatic. That should just be automatic. If you're running a school, you need to feed your children, and you need to feed them real food, and you need to feed them well. It's that simple. Like, that should just be the default setting. And anybody who says any differently, fuck you. I, I don't I don't give a shit about your opinion. You're You're a terrible human being, and I don't care what you have to say. Yeah, like if your if your default mode is fuck them kids, whatever. You're 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 out. Um, yeah, I know, right, Australia? Um, I saw your question with her. I didn't ignore it. I saw your question. Um, How do you think autark- uh, autarky would uh, apply differently to anarchist community types? Honestly, I, there's not a ton. I, unless you're running like a sort of egoism sort of shit. Um, there's not a ton of autarky, uh, autarky in um, anarchistic societies. There's, there's an element of self-sufficiency. So everybody knows autarky is just self-sufficiency within a model. Economic, socio, uh, social, economic, fucking educational. Autarky is just you doing it yourself. That doesn't really exist by and large. That that's that uh, fucking like myth of the self-made man shit. Y- you you live in a society. You 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 will use resources unless you're going full mountain man shit on this. Like you know, mountain man. I'm descent direct descendant of mountain man Jeff Bridger. So that means you know, unless you're going full mountain man on this shit, chances are you're you're not going to be operating under autarky uh, autarky for really any amount. Kook forty five xo. Thank you for the follow. Um, so it really doesn't get factored in that much. I mean, there's some level of self sufficiency. There's always going to be like, I mean, look at me. I build all sorts of shit and work on all all sorts of projects. But I mean, all the shit comes from somewhere, right? You know, Bill down the uh, down the road has a has a mill, and you know, fucking Danny up the up the way has some spare lumber from clearing out the pasture last year, and we've cut a deal. I kick him some some canned preserves and he kicks me the fucking lumber and I take it down and fucking we, we mill it and you know, shit like that. Like it just doesn't, it doesn't, it's not a thing. It's not a thing. It's kind of a myth to a huge extent. So, um, meat toad. (sighs) 
it's the, uh, the if I had to if I had to just put something out there, me toad, me toad asks what's the deal with some anarchists be starting to be against democracy. Two things. One, they're starting to see the results of what happened with democracy. They're growing jaded, right? Democracy got us here, right? Um, two, it's the oppression by the majority. There's always been critiques within the anarchist milieu about democracy and oppression of uh, by the majority. Um, so it's always been an undercurrent. It's always been a philosophical discussion. This is why when talking about decision making in anarchistic settings, I rely heavily upon either approval voting or um, consensus decision making. Because at least then you can sort of rule out to a larger degree that oppression by the majority. So there's always been an undercurrent or at least a vein of that within anarchist um, theorizing and discussion for sure. Um, but I think that if you're noticing an increase in it, I don't like that may be perceptive for you. I haven't noticed a specific increase in the circles that I run in, but... Again, I mean, individual experience is very anarchist circles aren't uniform. We aren't a monolith. And maybe the anarchists in your area are or in the circles that you're noticing are, are increasing discussion about this. If I, I would put it down to one of those situations, like, but I would, um, I would also, uh, see last night's point I would argue there's never been democracy. It's not a thing. I would, I would, I, I am starting to attempt to argue on a regular basis that for the majority of civilized societies and, uh, and most of mo uh, modernity, the systems at play are almost universally oligarchical. I don't think these systems have ever been anything other than. So. Yeah. You're welcome, Mita. I, I, yeah. I mean, it, especially in America, Australia, Britain, France, Germany, Spain, Italy, um, Portugal, Netherlands. Um, Canada. Those are the ones I'm comfortable. Yeah, I, I know, Gemma. I know. Thank you, though. Um, those are the ones I'm comfortable calling out off the top of my head. Dude, they're all oligarchical and have been for most of their, like, modernity. So, I, yeah, I, I, I'm, I'm, t I'm starting to argue that more and more. That, like, we haven't experienced representative democracy. It's always been rich people fucking governing shit, right? It's it's the rich and powerful in control. It has been since the formation and foundation of this country. Especially, you know, in America. Like, that, yeah. I, I would... Yeah. And I think there's a solid argument to be made that most of them, most systems of governance throughout human history... Oh, China, 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 name check China too, um, have been oligarchical, yeah. You're an idiot. You're an idiot, Glazy. I mean, I try and try and normally like be a lot more kind, but man, you are fucking stupid as shit. Do you know how many dumb rich people I've known in my life? A lot, a lot. I've known more rich people than you. Glazy. I'm comfortable saying that without even knowing you in real life. I'm comfortable saying that. I've known I've known wealthy people. Right? Like billionaires. I've known a couple. I've known a lot of rich people in my time. Do you know how many fucking dumb rich people I've met? A shit ton. Being rich does not mean you're smart. And being smart doesn't mean you're going to be rich either. There is no corollary between the two. And to suggest otherwise, just put yourself forward as a, as a fool. So. Ah. Well, 
Glazy, here's the thing: as a neolib, as a as a lib, we can't take we can't understand what you're joking about. Um, rich people just have more access to power and positions of power. They aren't necessarily blah 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 blah. Uh, rich equals smart equals holy equals righteous. This is Patronum. Nice. Um, yeah, lib cubed. Um, yeah, we don't we we can't understand your position half the time. So. That can actually be lucrative. It can be lucrative. I mean, you're never like I'm not gonna say never, but you you know you would have to you'd have to like do more with it and syndicate it, um, franchise it, that sort of thing. You, you, but you could create a little nice little mini empire out of that. I mean, you could you could yeah, any of those sorts of trades that people don't want to do themselves because they find um, uncomfortable, disgusting, or difficult to do. You can make a nice living off of. Yeah. Pest control is one of those things. If you're comfortable fucking dealing with rats and cockroaches and shit, rich people aren't. Yeah, you can... Oh my god, you're literally Dale Gribble. Um... Oh, uh, Cricks, I showed that video when it first premiered. I beat his on to that by miles, I'm sure. Um, just gonna, gonna. Um, yeah, this channel's seen that video too. Um, boo, Wither, boo. Well, that depends. Why didn't he want to hire you, Wither? That begs a question. Um,. Okay, Cricks. We'll get you caught up one of these days. <laughs> Dude, Cricks, we're on like episode 338, maybe? Keep in mind, uh, a good portion of those were podcast episodes. But like, I, I've been doing this a minute. Um. <sighs> Adia said some really kind words on her way out of the vehicle to the, um, to the airport. She, she said a couple of really th things that'll stick with me for a minute. Yeah. Um. Yeah. So for like <clears throat> days like this where we have, we're sitting at like 35 fucking people, which I know there's, I don't want to sound ungrateful. I don't want to sound ungrateful. I don't want to sound ungrateful, right? If 35 people walked into your house and fucking like started listening to you talk or something like that be too that's a fucking insane thing right um but there are times that i wish i had a slightly larger platform yeah like there's there's no getting around that that i'd like to if if i had my way we'd sit at like 100 to 120 steady i don't want more than that i don't i i i, I can handle that that's like my max that's when we start having to turn on slow mode, but that's 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 a that's an uh, an auditorium, right? Like that's a that's a theater lecture hall, which I would I would like to do that on a regular basis. Um, yeah, those those that would be ideal. Um, you need to start grifting to get bit. Is, did you go for grifting and it tr it auto corrected to drifting? Karina, um, um, you start grifting to get big, need a lot more headline chasing. I know, right? That's, um, <laughs> leftist drifting, um, Tokyo grift. Yeah. Multi-track grifting. Crystal got the win on that one. Crystal got the win. Uh, um, oh. 
So, one of these days, Karina, you need to just yell. People need to yell at me. See, here's the thing. The reason I don't do stuff like that is twofold. What Karina's talking about is like, I've talked about this before doing um, proudly degen, um, like merch. And I have difficulty doing stuff like that. Um, one, I don't think anybody would want it. Deep down, deep down, that's, I, I, I have a, um, as somebody who's been successful at shit he does, I have a weird, uh, fear of failure. Despite, like, all of the stuff that I just try, right? Like, there is, there is an odd thing there, right? Um, but two... It leaves a bad taste in my mouth. And, but I, I've, I've thought about doing that a bunch. Like, pr proudly degen fucking merch. The LGBT community would love it. Fucking leftists would love it. I know, like, that's the thing. And, yeah, like, I, people just need to hound me to do shit like that. Otherwise, I won't do it. Um... Patronum a bit. Um, it's it's not so much that I'm. I am a bit of a perfectionist, but I'm also really good at like my primary thing, and that's that's sort of um. It's sort of a curse, right? I grew up doing technology, IT, computer science, and I'm good at it. I didn't just grow up doing it. I'm good at it to boot. I have a natural inclination for it. I'm actually good at it outside of the skills that I developed. And so like you fold those together and it causes some really fucked up psychological phenomenon um, that you have to work at. Cause if you like, if I pick something up and I'm not good at it within the first five minutes, it's like, I got to fight through that inclination to just quit. Um, and I've spent a lot of years beating that impulse. Um, but yeah, it's still there to a certain it, that is certain certain thing delegate oh cassidy i i i'm i am terrible at delegation and you fuckers know you fuckers know i'm terrible at delegation i'm terrible at delegation i i, I mean, this is i ran my own it consultancy for big ass fucking companies and i wouldn't let anybody do anything i never had any employees never right like i would outsource from time to time but only stuff that i i hate doing like, I'm terrible at delegation. Yeah. And so, yeah, like, stuff like that, I, I you know, it's it kind of is on you guys as a community to fucking kick me in the ass for. Like, bitch, do it. Like, because I, I do seek perfection. Um, I, let's see. Fucks my executive function because the closer I get to delivering something good, the sooner I'll be going uh, subject to toxic expectations. You, Gemma, basically, yeah. Um, I, I, I seek perfection in a lot of things. Like, I could have merch out tomorrow. I could have merch out tomorrow. I could fucking use Printify or some shit like that, right? But I want fair trade fucking or, you know, organic hemp fucking t-shirts and shit like that, which drives the cost up to 65 and $75 per t-shirt, which makes it non-profitable to do and puts a, a bar an economic barrier to entry to anybody having the merch. And so, like, shit like that gets in my head. And so I, I just don't. Like, I just don't. There's two of these in existence. Okay? Two. Momo has one. I, I, I have the first one. And Momo has the other one. Straight up. There's two of these in existence. Um, that's why we trust you. You never became a true capitalist of the exploitation of employment. I have. I, I couldn't. I couldn't bear to do it. Um... Yeah, so, like, I, 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 you know, I think, one of these days I'll get that fucking correct. You know, shit like this. And shit like this. Like, we could, as a community, we could be producing this shit, right? Like, and shit like this. Like, you know, I bang this out in a fucking morning. Um, and, like, that's, like, I don't know if anybody's have, I don't know if you guys have noticed, um, but, like, I have, um, 
I have the Demi Boy fucking heart and yes and no reacts and like the 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 Demi Degen logo and shit that I use on Discord. If you've noticed, there's a there's a blue gray white yes no and heart response a reaction that I use sometimes. You know, I just shit like that. Like I know, like we could be turning that out as merch and growing this shit, right? Like. Dude, a fucking merch brand can catch on, and the next thing you know, that's bringing people into the channel. Like, where's this stuff come from? Oh, yeah, it's a fucking streamer. He, you know, he's an anarchist, and he'll fucking talk to you if you want. Like, that could be good for anarchism. Like, that's that sort of Machiavellian practice that I I, I preach, but I don't necessarily practice um, because of all of these weird psychological hangups that I have. Um... We're gonna look up perfection, but putting shit out there is still hard. Immediacy of doing stuff live doesn't give me the opportunity to obsess about it. Is it good enough? Dude, Gemma, you, you're starting to get me. Um, my parents fucked me up hard at that whole perfectionism kick. Dude, I made face masks for my casino that were given away that are now showing up on eBay for sale. It's amazing what people will buy. Dude, see, this is the kind of shit that I don't... I don't, like... What the fuck is happening here? Shit is... Who's deleting their... It's Sven. Sven is deleting shit live right now. I'm watching it happen on Discord. Um. Yeah, like I, I, I sincerely think it could be good for the topic of anarchism. Um. And I mean. I'm halfway decent at this, right? Like, I, it, this is the thing. Like, I hate, I hate saying, um, uh, I'm good at IT. I know that. I know that. In my soul, I know that. Everything else, I, I hedge. I couch, right? Like, but I'm halfway decent at this. As an advocate for anarchism, like, I, I think we could use some more exposure. I think we could use some more fucking asses in the seats. Um, and I think it would be good for the cause. I think I would be good for anarchism, um, I guess is what I'm saying. And um, yeah, I think merch could be an avenue to improving that. But I have so many weird hangups about operating within the capitalist model and how we would have those shirts produced that I just don't. Um... Yeah, Mossy, it's, um, here, let me help you out there. Side monitor, top monitor, iPad over here. So, yeah, Mossy. I guess, I guess, yeah, what I'm, uh, yeah, ethical t-shirts are fucking big dollars. That's, in some sense, that, that, that economic barrier to entry bothers me. But, like, Cassidy, if Bobby can find some shit, if Bobby can find some shit, here's what, here's also what I was thinking. Here's, here's something else. If we community crowdfunded something like a cricket printer or something like that and made iron-ons and then just used thrifted shirts. <laughs> Gemma. Um, yeah, use like secondhand shirts and repurpose them with our logo. Like just we'll come up with a bunch of fucking designs and just write on repurposed shirts. I, I, you know, I, I, stuff like that. Good to know, Cassie. Um, of course you do. Of course you do. Um, you have a cricket and a laser engraver. Um, purple clay for dye. I, you know, I, I don't, I don't know, but like, 
it just yeah like I, I let's I'll talk to Fertus I'll talk to Karina I'll talk to who else here is a designer who else here has graphic experience um we'll see if we can't get some ideas together for some shit like baseline products um All right, Bobby, because I can put the website together. I can get the storefront up. That's not a big deal. Um, yeah, you need you guys just need to kick me in the ass for this sort of stuff. That's that's basically the long and short of it. You guys need to kick me in the ass for this sort of stuff. Um. Watch this. Let's, let's, we're going to do that. We'll see what happens. Oh, uh, did somebody, while we were, uh, yeah, Colin, Gabriel, we're not libertarians. And there's a, that's an important distinction. Um, Let's see. Uh, I can get easy access to a vinyl cutter and laser cutter. My mom got a silver bullet vinyl cutter. She didn't know the name and had, <laughs> she didn't know the name had a second meaning. <sighs> Jeez, fair enough. Um, then you're probably not an anarchist, Gabrielle. I would have to. I, I would have to ask more. I'd have to ask more. Um, but if you're based in libertarian ethical thoughts, yeah. Do you still believe in capitalism? Gabrielle, you still for like free market solutions and shit like that? Um, how are you with like social welfare programs? Those, this is going to be the it, 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 the distinctions are going to come from enlightenment uh, enlightenment era philosophies and laissez faire economic decisions. These are probably going to be the two major distinctions that that need to be elucidated right out of the gate. Um. Yeah, but I mean, yeah, if you're like a classical libertarian, is in like a European classical libertarian, then that's just synonymous with many forms of anarchism. So it would just be those distinctions. Um, social welfare equals greater than market magic. And then, and one problem, step one, problem exists. Step two, step three, profit, market solutions, y'all. Um, so it looks like it's gonna be one of those streams. Interesting. Oh, then you're a fucking. You're not an anarchist. You're 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 a fucking neo. Uh, you're a neo feudalist slash uh, North American or neo libertarian. You're not an anarchist. You're like uh, the ANCAPs that think they're anarchists, but still uh, advocate for a hierarchical economic solution. Yeah. I'm not, I'm not being insulting. I'm not being mean here. I'm just, this is just from a political science perspective. Yeah, like that's the reality of the situation. Um... Yeah, if you're fucking Rothbard and Mises... I mean, Hayek, is, but yeah, Mises and Rothbard, especially. Yeah, you're 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 in that like Randian territory. You're not an anarchist. Um, and so you know, if you understand, like that, we do not believe in and caps aren't a thing. They're not a thing. I know they think they're a thing, but they're not a thing. And caps aren't anarchists. They're they're neo feudalists. Um, anarchism is about a philosophical challenging of power and author unjust power and authority mechanisms and the collapsing down into a hierarchical uh, uh, modality of operation wherever they may lie, right? Um, capitalism is inherently hierarchical, it is inherently coercive, and it is inherently oppressive. So utilizing a hierarchical, coercive, oppressive uh, uh, economic modality uh, under anarchism isn't possible. 
anarchism precludes that. These are mis this is a misnomer. They are antithetical at best. What it usually is is bad faith in organic uh, political speak in order to provide oneself cover for the political position that you're holding. Yeah, anarcho-capitalism isn't a thing, as see my previous statement. It's not a thing. I know people think it's a thing, but they're all anar they're all ancaps. They're neo-feudalists. That's what they are. <clears throat> they don't believe in actual anarchism. See, this is the thing. Ancaps don't understand anarchism. They're minarchists, at best. They don't understand anarchism. They're never schooled in anarchist theory or philosophy. They have none of the underpinnings of it. They're always economists. They come in here talking about Rothbard and Mises and Hayek, but none of them actually have a philosophy or a poli sci understanding of anarchism. If you understood anarchism, you'd understand that it isn't about the elimination, elimination of the state. Yes, we're about the elimination of the state, but it's because the state can't clear the justification for itself. The state fails to meet the philosophical, uh, the philosophical challenges of anarchism, and as such, we advocate for its dismantling or replacement thereof. It's not that we're just anti-state. It's that we have a set of ideals and philosophies that have to be cleared before we allow you to exist. You have to justify your existence under anarchism. The state doesn't meet that justification, but neither does capitalism. So when you understand anarchism and then you stand for capitalism, you don't understand anarchism. See, that's, this is, this is the, the quandary that you find yourself in. You're not an anarchist. All you are is at best a minarchist, at most a, uh, uh, a, um, a, a, in the least a neo-feudalist because you don't actually understand anarchism. Capitalism becomes the de facto state. It becomes the de facto system of governance. Gabriel, you have replaced your president with a CEO. You've changed Biden for Bezos. You still use a hierarchical system of oppression. You still use a, uh, a vertically oriented coercive system. And it's not semantics. It is a fundamental meta-ethical challenge that is not cleared by capitalism. So you understand Hayek, you understand Mises, you understand Rothbard. What elements of anarchism have you studied? Where's your philosophical understanding of anarchism? Because you've just cited a bunch of economists, basically. Where, where, is, where is your understanding of anarchism? Have you studied Kropotkin? Bakunin, Proudhon, Foucault, Bellomare, hell, even Chomsky, right? Like, where's your understanding of anarchism in all of that? McQu McQuinn, Black, Goldman, Nautiste, Makno? Like, any anarchists? See, this is, this is, you're about, again, Bitcoin, e e economics. You don't understand anarchism. This is the problem with neo-feudalists, a.k.a. ANCAPs. They never understand anarchism. They claim to be anarchists, but they've put no time in studying anarchism. They sit back and they, le uh, they read somebody like Rothbard, and they claim to be anarchists. Hey! Cap hey! Do no harm, but take no cap. As in capitalism. Oh, see, this is the thing. You're asking for economic solutions under anarchism. See, this is where I can fundamentally see that you don't understand anarchism.
Okay, so there is no fundamental economic solution under anarchism. Anarchism is a network of ideas, and in the words of Emma Goldman, we much prefer it that way. See, this is the thing. Anarchism is a lens of analysis and an oper a modality of operation. It's a philosophical set of ideals. It's a way to organize yourselves. There is syndicalism under anarchism. There is socialism under anarchism. There is capitalism under anarchism. There is communitarian under anarchism. There is gift economies under anarchism. There's even market solutions under socialism under anarchism. But anarchism itself doesn't inherently have an economic solution because that's not what it's about. You've conflated an economic system with anarchism. Uh, Mossy, uh, he's a capybara. The most chill, the most uh, equitable uh, animal in the animal kingdom. Capybaras get along with everybody. And again, you missed the entire point. The anarchism is a meta -eth anarchism is a set of philosophical ideals that require systems to justify themselves the um the state does not clear that justification it doesn't clear the hurdle thus we advocate for the dismantling of anarchism isn't just state bad remove state it's a philosophical set of ideals that have to be met for a system or an organization or a modality of operation to exist systems must justify themselves under anarchism the state fails to meet that justification thus we advocate for the dismantling or replacement or removal thereof but it isn't just the state that we talk about capitalism is also one of those things see when you understand anarchism you understand how to use anarchism you don't are you aren't just left with state bad because somebody told you state bad you haven't studied anarchism. You read Rothbard. You read Mises. You read Hayek. But you haven't read any anarchist theorist, apparently. Yet you claim to be an anarchist. That's like, I don't know, somebody claiming to be a Christian and having not read the Bible. Strange, isn't it? Yeah. This, the no state thing is a result of the philosophical underpinnings, the ethical critiques, the challenges of anarchism. It's a result, not a tentpole. It isn't anarchists believe state should be removed. It's anarchists have a set of philosophical ideals that the state does not meet. Therefore, the state should be removed. But other things don't meet those philosophical ideals either, such as capitalism. And when you understand anarchism, you understand how to use anarchism. Um, capitalism harms people, Gabriel. The fact is, if people want to live that way without harming other people, how is that a bad thing? Capitalism harms people. It's inherently coercive and oppressive. So there you go. And hey there, Cat. We're doing like a quiet stream today. It's fucking low count. We're fucking... Dude, Cat, we did a whole bunch of like... Talked about childhoods and fucking emotional stuff. It was all one of those streams, dude. Since there's not many people and I wasn't doing much theory until an end cap wandered in. Um, again, I don't... That's not for me to say. Ludicrous radical. That's not for me to say. Anarchists have a, uh, have a term. Uh, they have a phrase. It's called, there's no project of projects. Once I teach you how to operate under anarchist modalities, once I give you the tools necessary, you're free to do what you will. I, I don't, I, it, anarchism isn't prefigured, uh, prefigurative. It's not prescriptive. Maybe the community next door wants to be a bunch of syndicalists. Maybe the community next to them wants to be communitarians. Maybe the community next to them wants to run market socialism. Maybe the community next to them wants to go full-blown communism. 
As long as they operate and coordinate under anarchistic ideals and, uh, op uh, and operating modalities, then they're and-something. I am an anarchist. I am here to teach you about anarchism. What you do with it beyond that is up to you. As long as you hold true to those ideals, then that's up to you. And those that you have free associative reciprocal relationships with. And I can tell you, capitalism doesn't meet those ideals. So if you're going to come back at me, well, what if they want to operate under capitalism? Capitalism doesn't meet those ideals. It's, op it's oppressive. It's hierarchical. It's coercive. Those, that's not anarchism. <clears throat> Cheers. There is no perfect society. There is no utopian anarchism. There is no utopian uh, exemplar of anarchism. Anarchism isn't utopianism. <clears throat> Searching for a perfect society from an imperfect species is a, a fool's errand. Why would one do that? We're not ready for that as a species. The best we can do is harm reduction. So we should be talking about that. We should talk about better, not best. Hey, Fina. Don't get all Voltaire this late in the stream. Hey, you know, I've read many philosophers in my day. I've read, there's a lot of fucking contributing factors to this shit. Um, it is the rebreening tonight. Nonsense just for you. We held off last week. Tonight is brain night, brains night again tonight for you. Nonsense. We'll, uh, we'll do the next two films in the brain anthology. Um, the next two up are, I believe, um, Fateful Findings and Pass Through. <laughs> oh, no. No, no, ludicrous. No, I, I, I challenge that on philosophical grounds. No, it, capitalism is inherently coercive. Utilizing um, the greed mechanic of human psychology as an underpinning and a system that requires uh, infinite growth in a finite system is both um, coercive and uh, toxic or harmful to the world existence and us. Uh, no, I, I, I refute that whole cloth. And I mean, I'm not even, I'm not even close to alone in that refutation. I mean, I'm not even the only fucking, like, forget the anarchists, even the fucking Marxists agree with that shit, right? Like Marxian critiques of the internal conflicts of capitalism alone. I mean, done, right? Like his solution as a centralizing authoritarian communist was batshit insane as C. Bakunin's critiques, but Marx's critiques of capitalism were spot the fuck on. So, there we go. For those of you that can't read it, it's the surplus value of your labor 
that is extracted as profit. <clears throat> you provide them a superior alternative, Gabriel. And you isolate. And you isolate. <laughs> Man, I love it. Ah, uh, Steve Bannon, maybe one. Of you. <laughs> Steve Bannon, dude, I I have never underestimated Steve Bannon. He's a terrible human being, nonsense. But do not for a second think that he is dumb or dim-witted. Steve Bannon is a very smart, very clever, very crafty motherfucker. I've never underestimated that fucker. He's, he's to be worried about. When Steve Bannon decides to do something, keep an eye on it because he's usually successful at what he tries to do. It tries to do. It, it's, yeah, that motherfucker. Um, yeah, I, yeah, I keep an eye on him. Uh, which one? Did you already put the name in chat? Nonsense. Uh, HBO Doc Q into the storm. Okay, yeah, I've had it recommended a couple of times. Um, nonsense. I'll fucking give it a look. Hmm. No. No, because you believe that you can... I'm not. Why am I arguing with an ANCAP? I know, Rev. Like, they don't understand the difference between personal and private property. They don't understand... Like, why would I even... At this point... Like, this is... I have yet... I have found one educated, reasonable ANCAP. Everybody else is neo feudalists. You're you're a fucking neo feudalist. You don't get it. I have found one educated, reasonable person that I will grant the title of ANCAP to. And that's Scott. Scott can hold his own. He's infuriating, but he at least understands these concepts and principles. Fair fair play, Scott. Fair fucking play. Anyway, um, so Blizzard lost half, apparently half, of the World of Warcraft monthly users. Half. They got, um, yeah, Blizzard's uh, Blizzard's latest earning call. It looks like it may be the beginning of the end. Straight up. Hey, Ludacris. The person I was talking about literally described themselves as an ANCAP. But thanks. Welcome to the conversation. Fucking... Gabriel literally described themselves as a fucking ANCAP. Yeah, the world doesn't revolve around you. So get over yourself. Um Have you have you considered everything is actually about me? I know, right, Estrella? Um yeah, it, it looks like this is going to be the beginning of the end for, for fucking Blizzard. I don't know if Activision is going to survive this or not, um, but yeah, their Q2, uh, their uh, second, like, uh, second quarter earnings call, um, they lost half of their world, uh, their WoW um, monthly users. Uh, they... They still have 26 million. Don't get me wrong. They still have 26 fucking million. But they had 46 million. So they're just under half loss. Um, we'll see. 
We'll see. I mean, worse organizations have survived, you know, greater issues than this. So we'll see. But, I mean, that photo of the Blizzard executives at the convention, at the conference, posing under the, the painting of Bill Cosby they hung up in their hotel room. Fucking all shit like that. And the fact that they drove one of their staffers to fucking suicide with their harassment. The whole organization should be dissolved. There's no, there's no reeling that back. Um, some of the stories that came out of that are just horrific. So time to get rid of them. Yeah, looks at Hugo Boss and Volkswagen. I know, right? Spitfire Sentinel, thank you for the follow. Um, <gasps> Kaiser. Hey, Kaiser. I mean, that would be nice, Caboose, if they were going to take the servers offline, if they created some sort of alternative modality for operating them. That would be that would be kind and generous. I don't expect them to do that, though. I know, like, it's fucking anarchists are fucking laughable. Uh, Cupcake, they're, I mean... They're usually sort of like neocon, um, libertarian, like neocon libertarian types. Yeah. And did y'all see, like, here's, this is, this was the greatest fucking, um, somebody said, um, Somebody said about um, how they know the vaccine works and doesn't have too many down, uh, harmful down, uh, side effects. Um, Goldman Sachs is requiring not only their employees, but their clients who visit their facilities to be vaccinated. So like millionaire and billionaires. And nobody raised a stink. Goldman fucking, they, they're like, yeah, whatever. It's cool. Yeah. So it was like, it's somebody pointed that out. They're like, you know how you know it's effective is when the millionaires and billionaire class are like, yeah, we're fine with the vaccine. <laughs> like, shit's effective. Um, <clears throat> yeah. Even, yeah, even Trump is vaxxed. Like, fucking schmucks. Pookie, how about you don't use terms of familiarity with the, the mod staff like babe? Um, did somebody actually say that? I, I. Hey y'all, Emma Goldman wasn't an anarchist. Hey y'all, Kropotkin wasn't an anarchist. Bakunin wasn't an anarchist. Uh, fucking Proudhon wasn't an anarchist. Jason McQuinn isn't an anarchist. Uh, Michel Luc Bellemare isn't an anarchist. Fucking Mac uh, uh, Maknov wasn't an anarchist, y'all. Uh, Patek, your fucking definition is stupid. You've just literally excluded 95% of the anarchist milieu with that definition. 
like foundational thinkers of anarchism. And moralism as a fund as a foundational concept for your argument with anarchists like have you ever investigated moralism from an anarchistic perspe perspective Patek if you eat you're not an anarchist It is, Gemma. It is. This is this is why Yeah. It is it really quickly you end up with some fucking um um Juche, fucking Trotsky, um Posadism territory. Pretty quickly, actually. Itty bitty, there are. Um there are in America, there are abroad, um, historically and contemporarily. Um, I can point you to a couple depending on what part of the country you're in or what country you're in and then what part of that country you're in. I can get you to some if you'd like to visit some. And depending on size... Like, I can point you to that as well, itty-bitty. You, you give me a heads up and fucking I'll point you to them. Hey, Marcus, thank you for the biddies. Um, oh God, I forgot to mention Kai. As of yesterday, I was assigned my first trial court opinion to write. Oh Jesus, Marcus, I have a week. It's a case of terroristic threats and harassments. I'm inappropriately excited. <laughs> Marcus, Marcus, Marcus. Um, that's hilarious. Okay. So who was making the moralistic argument for veganism? Um, so do you live in America? Just out of curiosity, because in the first place, true veganism is basically impossible for anybody who lives in a capitalistic society. Most fruits and vegetables are already pollinated with bees or wasps, many of whom are commercially farmed. All right. So just right out of the gate, know that. Um, substantial proportions of fields are fertilized with manure or slurry from industrial meat farms as well. Uh, commercial alternatives are chemical fertilizers. You're not going to get your way around that. Maybe some petrochemical stuff uh, beyond that. Like, good luck. Here's your fucking, like, you know, vegan meal made from petrochemical stuff. Um, plus, vegan, uh, most vegan products in America utilize what's called a vertical monopoly um, that produces food from start to finish without bees, without manure, and hell, you know, let's just pretend and organic fertilizers and pesticides. Um, they use giant tractors usually that will crush moles, insects, displace other wildlife. Like proper vegan um, veganism is extraordinarily difficult to do within a capitalist society, which is why we talk about how there is no ethical consumption under capitalism. But again, who's got time for, you know, these sorts of moralistic distinctions, right? You, you have your soapbox. And um, as such, um, no, you really are. You really are. Um... So uh, you're already being ideologically inconsistent. So here, here we go. Like you, you, Patek, you don't live to your own standard. You're already being ideologically inconsistent, arguing for something that is an impossibility under their current system of coercion and oppression that we experience on a day to day. So you're asking for 100% perfection from somebody who can never achieve 100% perfection. You're asking us to be Jesus. No, 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 I don't know who you are. I don't know you nor trust you.
no, I don't bring people on that. And generally, if you ask to be brought on, that doesn't happen either. It's like asking to be mod. No. So. Fina, yeah, I'll get right on that. Your second paragraph, F, arguing for capitalism being the best known economic system to generate wealth, uh, but the redistribution is the part uh, that we have a problem with, is uh, shows a fundamental misunderstanding of uh, capitalistic modalities of operation. Um, there is an inherent greed, uh, greed and profit incentive that, uh, that furthers the uh, undermining of that redistribution part, making it literally like not a factor. Um, so you're going to have to strap capitalism to the fucking ground like uh, to even begin to have that conversation. Um, ethical egoist. We have an egoist in chat. Um, so you could actually talk to Kat about ethical egoism if you so choose. Um, straight up sternerist. Um, otherwise, you would risk being inconsistent. Inconsistencies exist within all sorts of philosophical uh, ideal sets. We recognize them as uh, as foibles of human being. Um Let's see, blah, 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 and But capitalism isn't ideologically consistent either. You're advocating for something. You're making a claim uh, for purity that you can't meet yourself. You're setting standards that you can't meet. Interesting. So you're a hypocrite too. You're a hypocrite complaining about hypocrites. Hmm. Methinks she, she doth protest too much. Um, anyway. And Patek, it's not my job to read your shit out loud. If chat wants to read your, your arguments, then it's they're free to read them. It's not my job to read them out loud for you. I'm not your paid narrator. I'm reading them. But again, you're all over the place. And you're going to put a wall of text in. You're probably going to call me idiotic again. You're going to say I'm sitting on this same point, even though you're sitting on the same point. So it seems we've reached an impasse at this point. Um, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, unless you want to redeem channel point redemption for reading something and then tell me to read your shit. Like, that's fine. Oh! Oh, the dude follows Destiny, so he's just another debate bro. Never mind. This isn't a debate channel, Patek. This isn't a debate channel. If you want to have a conversation, that's fine. But this isn't debate bro energy. And yeah, that that's good pointing that out. This is debate bro energy. This is straight up debate, bro, energy. All right. Well, find yourself another channel, Patek. If you want to have a discussion about anarchist uh, anarchist theory and practice, that's fine. Um, but generally, like the way you came in and with the energy you've been promoting this whole time, mm, I'm not really in engaged, to be perfectly honest. Uh, can we just confirm that inheritance is peak nepotism, the biggest reason why capitalism has never been a meritocracy? It's never been anything other than uh, an oligarchy, really, in this country especially. But, I mean, for the most of developed civilization, it's been oligarchical in form and fashion. In its actual implementation, um, yeah, basically all of developed civilizations have been oligarchically organized. Um, the ones with access to the power and lineage uh, or uh, heretical resources, um, or you know they they gain the most in the system 
Um, we could point to a recent contemporary example of a new market a, um, exemplar in the state of Nevada when we rolled out our cannabis industry. Um, they created a $100,000 lottery ticket system that anybody with access to capital could uh, could enter. And the people who had access to the uh, the lottery were the ones who were already the capitalist class of the society. Um, so the organizations, the businesses, the people that were able to enter that marketplace upon um, opening uh, in this state were already rich. They're already the ownership class. We're an oligarchy. So... Typical leftist cop out. Oh, you're adorable, boo boo. Have fun on have fun irritating wherever you may go. Yeah, Rev, it's what happened it was what happened in a bunch of states actually. Um Who's got time for equity, right? Well, that's exclusionary as fuck. Yay, capitalism! Um. Oh. Um. What does what what's Krusty talking about? I wanna. I wanna. Where's Krusty? Soil. Oh, soylent green is our future. Okay. That. That's got it. Got it. Got it. Um, oh shit, they just caught a ban. Um, oh, Patek, you're adorable. Wait, do they actually do anything? Because they've got like Patek TV. Um, zero followers, no description. Oh, of course. They're one of those people. Got it. Ah. Uh, It was Columbia. Was it Columbia? Oh, Princeton. 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 It was Princeton. Rev. It was Princeton. The um that America is demonstrably an oligarchy. Yeah. Um. Yeah. No. Like that's that's the thing is Patek. Patek doesn't stream, fucking doesn't write, doesn't do anything, doesn't organize, doesn't fucking say shit about shit, just likes to go around and fucking debate, bro, people. I know that energy. I know those type of people. Good luck. God bless. Mm. Um, yeah, you probably should actually rev. It's super useful to be able to read those kind of papers. Um, all right. So we did that. We did the doom repel shit last night. Oh yeah. That was, um, that was a fun one. Hey, um, Hey y'all, the for-profit medical uh, system in this country is doing wonders. Um, <clears throat> us army veteran da- uh, Daniel Wilkinson started to feel sick last week. He went to a hospital in Belleville, Texas, just outside Houston. Um, his health problem wasn't related to COVID-19. Um, but Wilkinson needed advanced care. Um, and, but Texans and coronavirus have filled up the ICU beds. Um, so he couldn't get a bed to save his life. Um, literally to save his life. Belleville's emergency room physician, Dr. Hassan uh, Kakli, treated Wilkinson and discovered that he had gallstone pancreatitis and um, something that Belleville wasn't equipped to treat at the time. Quote from the doctor himself. I do labs on him. I get labs and the labs come back and I'm at the computer and I have one of those oh crap moments. If that stone doesn't spontaneously come out and doesn't dissolve itself, that fluid just builds up, backs up into the liver, backs up into the pancreas and starts to shut down those organs. His blood work even showed that his kidneys were beginning to shut down. Cackley told uh, uh, Begnod uh, that his patient was dying right in front of him. 
Uh, Wilkinson needed a higher level of care, but hospitals across Texas and much of the South overwhelmed with COVID patients. There was literally no bed, no treatment, no hospital that could take him. Cackley recalled uh, for reporters saying that I made multiple phone calls to other facilities only to get a lot of sorry, sorry, sorry in replies. Places that had the specialists necessary to do the procedures, but because of how sick he was, Wilkinson needed intensive care and they didn't have ICU beds to put him in. So further from the doctor, then I'm at my computer and I'm just like scratching my head. And I get this thought in my head. I'm like, what if I put a, put this on Facebook or something? Maybe somebody can help out. One doctor messaged me, hey, I'm in Missouri. Last time I checked, we have ICU bids. We can do this. Call this number. The guy messaged me. He's a GI specialist. He goes, I'm in Austin. I can do this procedure. Get him over. I said, okay, great. Let's go. He texts me back five minutes later. I'm sorry. I can't get administrative approval to accept him. We're full. For nearly seven hours, Wilkinson waited in an ER bed in Belleville. Uh, uh, Cackley, the doctor, I had that thought in the back of my head. I need to get his mother here right now. I said, if he doesn't get this procedure done, he's going to die. I also had to have the discussion with him. Dan, if your heart stops in front of me right here, what do you want me to do? Do you want me to do everything we can to resuscitate you and try to get your heart back? If that were to happen, Dan, if I were to get you back, we're still in the position we're in right now. He said, I want to talk to my mom about it. <sighs> Dan's not with us. Yep. 24 hours after uh, Wilkinson walked into the uh, emergency room, he died. This is what profit-driven healthcare looks like. This is what selfishness looks like. This is what anti-vax programs, uh, anti-vax stuff looks like. It looks like a guy who survived multiple tours of duty in Afghanistan, dying in a hospital bed waiting for treatment in Texas. So the next time that somebody tells you that socialized medicine kills people, and the next time somebody fucking talks about waiting times in Canada, Canadian hospitals and that how you can't get your hands on a specialist, you know, maybe talk about Dan Wilkinson, a U.S. Army veteran who died because COVID fucking deniers wouldn't get their vaccine and they filled up all the ICU beds and the hot for-profit healthcare system that America runs wasn't ready and wasn't able to deal with the overwhelming nature of that crisis. And it killed him. Maybe something to think about. Jeez, Australia. Yep. I... happens all the time here. Ludicrous. It happens all the time here. I spent 12 months waiting for a neuromuscular specialist here. 12 months. Happens all the time here. No, a biopsy. 12 months for a biopsy. Yeah. So even lower technology than an MRI. 
I've got some serious chronic shit. So, yeah. So I pay eleven thousand dollars for for worse uh, for the same results. So I pay more for the same. Oh yeah, it's great. Let's fucking stand that shit. Yeah, fucking brilliant. Let me let me pay eleven thousand dollars for uh, the the same. Cool. It's a fucking plan and a half. Yeah, let's go with that. Let's face it. Even the Koch brothers' survey, uh, even the Koch brothers' funded study, showed that so, uh, that a single payer universal healthcare system would achieve better results at less cost, to the tune of ten to twelve trillion dollars over ten years cheaper. Even the Koch brothers were on board with this shit. When the Koch brothers. Libertarian famous Koch brothers. Well, like, yeah, it saves money and we get better outcomes. Dude, you're on the wrong side of this. But hey, who's got time for Dan Wilkinson, right? The callousness. The callousness. And you know, we used to be a primarily non-profit healthcare system prior to the Nixon administration and the Kaiser Permanente. At that time, it was just Permanente. Uh, orchestrations. Yeah. The creation of the HMO uh, healthcare system in this country via uh, Permanente in coordination with the Nixon administration in 1973 basically was the uh, death knell for, uh, for equitable healthcare in America. Most of the boomers grow up, uh, grew up with uh, nonprofit healthcare. Yeah. For for me, not the right. Um, you ever see the fucking Crested Butte video I posted on the Discord server? It's fucking brilliant. Crested Butte basically can't. They have no employees. The town of um, Crested Butte like has no bartenders they have no fucking retail workers everybody's priced out everybody's completely priced out it's every single fucking store you go down the um the main drag in crested butte right now every store has a fucking help wanted sign up yeah sort of like the two-thirds step of gentrification Uh, Rev, it may have surpassed Aspen at this point. Yeah, there's one place to rent ha uh, rent uh, apartments in Crested Butte right now. One. They don't even have the facilities to house the workers at this point. And the apparently the stupid, uh, the fucking like miserly rich people that live there won't pay the appropriate prices. The stores can't raise their rates to accommodate the changes in the economic demographics like they should be charging $150 for a t-shirt basically and then paying their employees their retail workers probably something in the neighborhood of 35 to 45 dollars an hour <laughs> straight up like to keep up with uh, rental rates if you look at the house prices and the rental prices for in and around the livable area of crested butte dude, it's all in the millions of dollars like a cheap house right now in Crested Butte is going for like 2.5. Yeah. So Yeah, they can't even they can't even raise the rates because the fucking miserly rich people there there won't pay them. 
So the store owners are forced to work the stores themselves. They're having to close halfway down. Uh, they're having to close halfway through the workday. These sorts of things. Yeah, it's it's a complete shit show. It's a complete disruption of economic processes. Crested Butte uh, Wither. It's C R E S T E D space B U T T E. It's in Colorado. Um, it's it's a place similar to Aspen or Vail. Um, I used to we used to do Thanksgiving in Vail. Vail was. Vale, okay, so Aspen is where like all of the rich Hollywood and maybe some of the tech types ended up. Vale was where all the old money was. Um, it's very subtle, but there's a lot of money there. Crested Butte is quickly catching up. Um, Karina, not really. No, not really. Um, it's more like if if we're going to talk about um, capitalist systems and ethical consumption under capitalism, then fair wage should be like the first talking point. Stepping stone jobs really aren't a thing. Um, this was the this was the idea behind the federal minimum wage to start with. Even um, this isn't even an anarchistic co- concept. This used to be just an American concept that the federal minimum wage was something that a and this is the old timey quote that a man can support his wife, two children, and buy a house and live a, a, a satisfying life on, right? Like that was the original idea behind the federal minimum wage was you should pay a living wage. That went out the window a while ago. Yeah, for a whole damn family. For a whole damn family. So. I think I'm going to drink some um, some Kratom tonight for the fucking um, Breen stream. I think I'm going to... I think I'm gonna, I, don't, I don't have any weed and I don't feel like buying any. <laughs> hey, Herodimus. Yes, the rent is too damn high. Um... I can attest to that. Nineteen fifty a month is what I pay for this fucking place. Um, yes, Karina, I did. I actually, did. god damn it, Karina. Um, yes. Um, so Karina, um, uh, Karina, um, yeah. Do anarchists put st- weight in stepping stone jobs because it's blah 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 blah? Okay, so you know your que- uh, your question, uh, Karina. So basically, what I said is this isn't even an anarchistic concept. Anarchists don't. They, we our conversation starts at living wage and then moves forward. But this isn't even an anarchistic concept. Um, basically, um, this was the original concept behind uh, the 1950. Uh, 1950. This is the, the original concept between, uh, behind the federal minimum wage in America. The old quote goes something along the lines of uh, a, a man a man should be able to support his uh, a man should be paid a living wage to be able to support his wife, two children and uh, own a home and live a uh, live a productive life. Right. Like this is this is the original concept behind the federal minimum wage in America was that the minimum amount you should pay somebody is should be enough to allow them to live a productive life. They should have kids. They should have a wife. They should have a house. They should be able to go on vacation occasionally. They should be able to earn savings. Right. That was the original idea behind the federal minimum wage. Um, Of course, that's gone out the window now. But yeah, that's, that's so yeah, it's not even an anarchistic concept. It's just a straight up fucking, this is what we used to do concept. Once upon a time.
Um, yeah. Oh, Jesus Christ. Is that really a thing? I wasn't even aware of that, Rev. Let me, let me look into that. That's... It's not that I doubt you, Rev. I just... I want... I want... It's three thirty-four an hour. Jesus Christ, you're two cents above. Di workers with disabilities can earn three dollars and thirty-four cents an hour. Nineteen thirty-eight U.S. labor law. Yeah, it's doing great, guys. It's doing fucking great. Uh, <sighs> $3.34 an hour. You could be legally paid that an hour if you're disabled. Person who needs it more than the able bodied person can be paid a fraction of the amount. Oh. 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 Yeah, no, it's doing great, guys. System's amazing. Totally equitable, fair, ethical. For sure, for sure, for sure. Yeah, no, this shit doesn't need an overhaul. <laughs> premarital. Have fun, premarital. Uh, but, 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 but we have freedom. I know, right? I know about the losing the disability payments thing, Gemma. That I know about. I didn't know that they could fucking screw them on the pay rate, too. Yeah, totally not exploitative at all. At all. Oh, yeah, Marcus. The 13th Amendment allows for um, slavery. Straight up. We, we didn't outlaw slavery. We codified it. Neither slavery nor involuntary servitude, except as punishment for crime, whereof the party shall have been duly convicted, shall exist within the United States or any place subject to their jurisdiction. Yep. You get convicted of a crime, you're a legal slave in this country. And if you need proof of that, well, then you're, I don't know, you're riven under a fucking rock and not paying attention, but we can get you the proof. Ugh. Hair. Some sort of dangly hair was just sort of in my vision. Um... A radio. No more slaves, guys. Unless we call them inmates. Be sure to change all your labels. Um, yeah, that's basically what we did. We just rebranded it. Thank you, God. Um. I... <laughs> Harden the fuck up. <laughs> yeah, uh, 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 Gabriel, um, Aussies swear like a fucking sailor. Just par for the course. And I do too, a lot of the time. Like, I, I really like fuck, fuck, fuckity, fuck, fuck, fuck. Fuck is a good word. It's great. Um, but Aussies swear like fucking sailors. That's just a part of their vernacular. And how dare you attempt to castigate their working class vernacular? 
I'm a woke scold you over. Um, Kaiser. Um, hot bath, Kaiser. Hot bath. All the blue collars do. Bobby, all the blue collars do. Um, Kaiser, hot bath. Epsom salts if you got them. Um, uh, chloride over sulfate. Um, so magnesium sulfate is pretty much uh, the standard Epsom salt. What you want is magnesium chloride if, if you can get your hands on it. Um, but yeah, hot bath, Kaiser. Um, water with a little bit of salt in it um, to replenish some of those missing electrolytes and uh, a nice hot bath. Soak. Um, so. Yeah. So, Gabriel, are you saying that there has never been an enlightening debate in Australia? Because they all swear like fucking sailors down there. Have you just precluded an entire continent from enlightening debate due to your attempt to castigate their vernacular? Just saying. Um... What do you mean, you people? <laughs> um, is it that a, is it that big a request that I own my own home, uh, my own home, so I can dictate my out of work life? I want to smoke weed in the bathtub while living with landlords and renting makes that illegal. Oh, fuck that. Um. Hey, Adia, are you feeling better, Adia? Are you feeling better? Um, everybody, Adia's in chat. Adia made it home safe and sound, it seems like. Um, a little worse for wear. A little worse for wear. Get it, get it, caboose. Get it. Um, what? 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 I said. Um... Uh So here's a fun one. Hey Gabriel. Um sleep well. A guy with uh, ties to white supremacist organizations received a hundred thousand dollars from the FBI as an informant. We know this because of uh, court documents that were released. Um, so he took that hundred thousand dollars and basically became a book publisher. And um, he he uh, his father was a Pentecostal minister who was a known purveyor of racist memorabilia. Um, but he was using his uh, FBI earnings as a confidential informant to literally publish uh, works such as The Devil's Quran um, and other occult neo-Nazi uh, um, uh, stuff. He's got um, – he's a prominent member of um, Adam Waffen. Um, and so, yeah, uh, <laughs> the FBI – uh, paid over $140,000 um, to him since 2003. Um, he also got paid $78,000 for a, an expense advance, which uh, coincided with uh, his work. Um, so, yeah, uh, the, the U.S., uh, the FBI has been literally funding an Adam Waffen division um, book publisher in America. Woo. Oh, that sucks, Adia. That sucks. Sorry about that. That sounds about neoliberal. <laughs> yeah. It really does, doesn't it? 
I, I, <laughs> you know, we, we funded a fucking Adam Volfin book publisher. Great. That's fucking, that's like when the FBI was running uh, the child porn servers. Y- you know, that the FBI was running child porn servers, right? The FBI was running child porn servers. Um, No, Karina, no. I just went looking. I just hope the people he helped take down was worth it. Oh, you mean the person? Um, yes, um, no. Um, it, 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 let me just read you this, um, the way it is written. The FBI had hoped to target others involved in an occult neo-Nazi publisher in the state. think you know how that turned out yeah we paid one hundred and forty thousand dollars to a fucking white supremacist with ties to like violent white supremacist groups who publishes propaganda for white supremacists in hopes to catch other violent white supremacists and we failed so all the FBI really did at the end of the day was publish Adam Waffen division propaganda. Woo! Yeah. God, we suck. <laughs> God, we fucking suck. Um, so New York has, uh, approved COVID vaccine mandates for all healthcare workers and removed religious exemptions. Um, all healthcare workers in the state of New York must be man, uh, must be vaccinated by October 7th at no later, or they will not be, va- uh, they will not be, um, s- subject to employment any longer. Um, they won't, they won't be, uh, eligible for employment any longer. And like I said, no religious exemptions. I'm not a fan of the government having to do this, but this is, as far as I'm concerned, this is like parents taking toys away from children who can't play with their toys correctly, right? Like you fucking, you're being a shitty little brat with your brothers or your sisters and you're fucking hitting them with the dump truck over their head and shit. And your fucking mom comes in the room and takes the fucking toys. If you're not able to play nice, then you don't get to play at all. This is, this is what we should expect. Right? Like, for the love of God, people. This, wh- why is this controversial? Right? Take your fucking... Just get your fucking vaccine. Just get your fucking vaccine. But now, the authoritarians are going to see this as a moment to seize upon power. And they're going to do it. And they're going to close loopholes. They're going to cl- exclude freedoms that you would have otherwise had. Because you fucking morons didn't play nice and the system is set up to do that so am i surprised no am i happy about it a little bit mixed feelings as an anarchist i hate it i hate it but dan wilkinson would have loved for it to have been a thing Hey, Aka. Um, no, Wayne. The morons are the one who didn't. You did. Um, 
Yeah. I, I, I have no patience for this. I'm the son of a nurse. I grew up in hospitals. I have a decent scientific literacy. I, I, I don't, I have no patience for this whatsoever. Get your shit together, people. Or else the government's going to do what the government does. They're going to make you do stuff. And when they make you do stuff, they'll take that as an opportunity to make you do some other stuff. It's never a good time. I still see that fucking children are 36% of Tennessee's virus cases. 36. Over a third of the COVID cases in Tennessee right now are kids. And, oh, I want to check on that Florida oxygen situation. Yep, it looks like it's good. They're preparing for worse. Uh, ten of the major hospitals in Central Florida are renting coolers to deal with the influx of bodies. They're running out of oxygen. They're running out of space to put the bodies. They're running out of beds. Good job. Good job. Um, it's okay, Wayne. It, you know. If you if you get a little unruly, Wayne, we'll 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 remind you. But for the most part, it's Friday. I get it. Sacramento just reached capacity today. Jesus Christ! I don't know what. Um, let me check Las Vegas right now. Because we have a... We're at 85% capacity right now, which is a little bit above our, our typical running rate because you don't run ICU beds at low capacity like icu beds you you design the system to run at a certain level of capacity all the time um we're running at 85 percent right now so we're we're good we're good aka um yeah i'm gonna um this is for those of you who are new that don't know this drawer this is where all the fun stuff comes out of. Um, um, yeah, I'm thinking I'm going to do um, some Kratom tonight, actually. I'm feeling, I'm feeling that. Um, yeah. Idiot, the bottle that ended me. Um, it's amazing though, isn't it, Idiot? Dude, it's such good stuff. I don't drink anymore, so you know the the only the only way this bottle goes down is when people are here. Uh, which one? This one or this one, Caboose? Uh, option A or option B? Um, it's McAllen. Oh. It just smells so amazing. Oh, it's uh, in the aged Macallan. Um, it's it's single malt Highland Scotch. Um, yeah, it's 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 good. It's good. Um, it 
it it is it'll kick you in the fucking it'll it'll kick you in the brain for sure it is strong it is strong yes it is it is strong um but it is delicious um adia adia even asked she's like is there is this like chocolate there are there are notes of fruit and herbs and chocolatey and like deep rich tasting notes in that stuff it is amazing um yeah yeah it, it honestly the only the only way that bottle goes down is um if a guest is here or somebody dies um if somebody in my life knows somebody if they're like you know oh a longtime friend died drink it's it's let's honor their memory right or a guest is visiting have a drink um yeah but yeah i'm gonna do i'm gonna do some kratom tonight um it is isn't it amazing what an oak, oak cask can do cassidy it's it's absolutely stunning um So, thank you, Adia. Um, by the way, if anybody wants a fucking article on why not to be a vegan as an anarchist, link is in chat. In case you ever encounter that idiot again. Um, Kaiser, come on through, man. <laughs> um, I'll take care of you. Um, but yeah, the, the link in chat. In case you, you ever need to argue with somebody who's fucking like, you know, oh, the only way to be an anarchist is to be a vegan. People have written about this. It's, it's just the argument doesn't hold water. So there's there's something to do about it. Um, honestly, Wither, I haven't looked into it a ton. I know like I know the basics that like one it started as an art movement um but like climate change and fucking pollution and shit like that and it's basically steampunk plus cyberpunk plus like climate like green uh motivational sort of like it's it's punk plus egalitarian and humanitarianism that's that's if i had to like you know sum it up in in my not that terribly well read on the topic but you know i mean i don't think it's a thing yet really but if it becomes a thing, I mean, I'm okay with that. Like, as far as I know, they're, like, anti-authoritarian. They're anti-war. They're, um, like, you know, pro, like, you know, um, LGBT, pro-human rights, fucking egalitarian enlightenment principles, humanitarianism, that sort of stuff. Um, I don't, Cricks. I really don't. Um, I have no idea. I'd just give it a try. Yeah, that's what I would do. Um, Hi there, it's me, Tofu Soy. Here's something you might not know about me. I'm one of them vegans you keep hearing about. All right, stop it, stop it, you jackal. See, this is why I don't like talking about it. You always end up inserting booing noises into your videos. Let me tell you, vegans make it hard to be vegan sometimes. I like aminals, and I want the environment to be good, so I thought, yeah, okay, I'll do that thing. I don't want to. I'd prefer to eat almost exclusively cheesy gordita crunch wraps from Taco Bell, think outside the bun, but it's for the animals. I'll do it. And I've been vegan for the past six years or so. Very little actually tempts me to eat of the forbidden flesh at this point. That is until other vegans, particularly white vegans like myself, start speaking. It makes me want to eat animal products out of shame so that people don't associate me with them. You know exactly the type of shit I'm talking about. The title uh, for the the video, it's a thought sign video for those of you that don't uh, don't know. Uh, veganism is uh, incomplete without anti-capitalism, actually. Um, yeah. Um, 
I'm just looking forward to the thir- uh, the resurgence of mixtopian literature. Then my queer nanopunk thriller might have an actual market. Gemma, I'm going to need you to add a couple of, uh, ad- additional descriptors. I need that to go on further. Like my queer nanop- uh, nanopunk fantasy sci-fi uh, murder mystery thriller, psychological thriller. Um, you know, like I, I need I need like 12 or 15 descriptors. And then that would really uh, like amuse the fuck out of me. Um Uh, skeptic it's um it's been an interesting fucking evening um we've had a we've had some we've had some interesting takes let's just put it that way um we've had a fucking minarchist we've had a fucking um some destiny debate bro stan moron fucking come in and try and launch the argument that you can't be an anarchist unless you're vegan um we've had fucking we had a few idiots. We had a few idiots. Those are the last two that spring to mind. Queer nanopunk nix, mixtopian church versus queers political thriller with a teenage Scooby gang. Now I'm in, Gemma. Now I'm in. Uh, depending on how, how thick the book is, when all is said and done, Gemma, like, if it's in this territory... I may be interested in doing the audiobook for you. I'm trying to build that resume. I want to do some voiceover work and stuff like that. Um, so if you if you keep it into like a reasonable size, we could talk. I'll, I'll do the I'll do the audiobook version. Um, my sister tried to go vegan. Um, ooh, 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 205. Um, thank you for the follow, by the way. Uh, my sister tried to go vegan only to find out she has some really weird condition with iron and she can pretty much only get iron through animal products or else she'll get a severe uh, iron deficiency. Um, um, yeah, yeah, Caboose. I'm, I, I have digestive problems with a whole bunch of like the, like hardcore, um, uh, plant protein stuff. I can't, sorry. I'm just not going to get what I need from it. Um, I remember being vegan, total Faustian bargain, best shape I was ever in, but dear God, did I hate it. Um, did everybody see the, uh, body cam footage of the cops shooting the puppy? You know how I love to do you. You know how I, you know how I love to do you guys. Uh, hey maniac. Um... Yeah. Um, so here, I'll give you the, I'll, I'll, I'll read it to you. So here you go. When Colorado police officer arrived at an empty lot where Wendy Love and her husband Jay Ham had parked their truck to let their three dogs stretch and drink water in June of 2019, the law enforcement agent did not announce himself. A new lawsuit alleges without warning. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Muscle, muscle. Give, Give me The officer yelled for the couple to call him back. They did, and the dog complied. But Herkimer, the couple's uh, puppy, jumped out of the truck and began running towards the officer. Seconds later, Officer Matthew Grasshorn... What's up, Officer Grasshorn? Um, name, Name check for this piece of shit. Fired two shots at the puppy. Herkimer fell to the ground instantly... As love came to his aid, the video shows. Why did you do that? Love said through tears. I don't know. Because he's coming after me like he's going to bite me. The Loveland Police Department. Hey, you guys remember the Loveland um, Police Department, right? The one, uh, the same police department that yanked the arm up of the 73-year-old dementia uh, dementia patient. Who fucking, like, literally yanked her arm out of the fucking socket. Th- that's them. Same police department, guys. Um, 
I don't know because he's coming after me like he's going to bite me, the Loveland Police Department officer replied. Despite the couple's pleas, Herkimer was not taken to the vet until the police uh, department officer replied, uh, uh, um, I'm sorry, until the uh, until Grasshorn's supervisor arrived at the scene about eight minutes later, according to court records. The Grasshorn, uh, Grasshorn's, uh, uh, the Staffordshire Terrier, Terrier and Boxer mix had to be euthanized four days later. The couple was charged with a dangerous dog offense, which was later dismissed by the district attorney's office. In a lawsuit filed this week, the couple uh, the couple alleges that Grasshorn used excessive force on the sweet, loving, and playful dog, which they said has no history of biting or being aggressive towards humans. Herkimer was clearly a friendly dog and not dangerous to anybody, the couple's attorney, Sarah Shilk, uh, told the Shilky, um, Shilky, uh, told the uh, Washington Post. He looked like he was curious and excited to greet this officer, and watching him get shot in the head and fall down was traumatic, she added. The only thing that could be worse, then, was watching a video like this is watching a video like this and then not doing anything about it. According to the suit, the department reviewed the video and found that the officer responded appropriately. Grasshorn is still on the force court record state. He has not responded to the co complaint in court either. Spokesperson with the city of Loveland was unable to immediately provide a response to the post, but said that the city was reviewing the complaint. This is the third lawsuit Shilke has filed against officers with the Loveland Police Department in the past two years. Department having made local and national headlines for allegations of excessive use of force, all of them recorded by officers' body cameras. In June 2020, an officer was recorded tackling a 73-year-old woman with dementia who walked out of a Walmart without paying for $13.88 worth of items. A woman suffered a broken and dislocated shoulder. That officer and another involved in the rest were actually later charged after a video was released of them mocking the woman while she remained in the precinct's booking jail for hours without receiving medical aid. The following month, officers were recorded hitting, kicking, and punching a man in a Target parking lot. The officers were responding to a call asking that the man who suffered from mental health issues be removed from the property. Police said the man resisted arrest. And last month, the city of Loveland, reaching a $290,000 settlement in a lawsuit filed against the police department for allegedly wrongfully arresting a man in September of 2019, the incident also captured on officer body camera footage um, after violently arresting... Uh, 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 let's see, a bit of... Uh, um, yeah, um, uh, yeah, after, yeah, 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 okay, so that's, that's weird, uh, reached a $290,000 settlement in a lawsuit filed against the police department for allegedly wrongfully arresting a man to the September of 2019. The incident was also captured on officer's body camera footage. After arresting, a, uh, violently arresting the woman 73 with dementia, police laughed about it. The video shows, quote, we crushed it. Love and Ham spent most of June 29th, uh, 29th, 2019 delivering firewood along with their three dogs, Bubba, Max, and Herkimer. The lawsuit states, around 5 p.m., the couple parked their truck in the corner of a commercial building's parking lot so their dogs could get out of the car after a long day court record state. What the couple didn't know was that the owner of the building, who was looking at a surveillance video remotely, had called the Loveland police to report the silver truck, according to court records. He told the dispatcher that somebody had previously tampered with the dumpster's lock and that although the couple was nowhere near it, he wanted the police to investigate what they were up to, quote, the lawsuit states. While in the parking lot, the couple let each dog out of the truck to drink water. Bubba stayed on the ground napping. Max, who was known to wander, was tied to a tree, and Herkimer returned back to the back of the truck. When Grasshorn arrived moments later, he stepped out of the vehicle unannounced, pulled his gun within one second of Bubba standing up, his body camera, uh, uh, body camera video showing this. Grasshorn pointed the weapon at Bubba. The dog retreated. Then, when out of excitement, Her Herkimer jumped out of the truck's back seat and ran towards the officer to greet him. The lawsuit states... The officer then points his gun at Harkimer, who continues running towards him, before he shot the dog once in the head and once in the body. Quote, Why did you have to shoot him? Ham yelled as Herkimer lay on the ground, bleeding. He's a puppy. Love, Love cried. I didn't know that, Grass, Grasshorn yelled. Once Love was by his side, Grasshorn repeatedly ordered her to get away. He will bite you. He's hurt, he said of the puppy. When Love asked Grasshorn if they could take Herkimer to the vet, he replied, Ma'am, you're not going to be able to help him. <sighs> All right, I'm going to scroll up a ways. Um... Hmm. 
Hmm. Okay, skeptic. Um. Yeah, I gotta, I gotta, I gotta, I gotta pull that one, Karina. Um, yes, yeah. Um, so there you go. Um, for those of you who haven't seen the video, don't, don't. Some people have seen it. I saw in chat that there are a few people have seen it. Yeah, no, the puppy just gets out and fucking runs at the cop. Like, <laughs> it's, it's not worth looking, looking at. Um, um, Karina, 11? Jeez. That's, yeah, oof. Um, that's gonna be a thing. That's, that's second, that's second film territory, Karina, for sure. Um. <gasps> yeah, sorry, Zippy. But again, you know, it's Friday. We're going to, we're going to dump out to Neil Breen. Um, and so, you know what? Um, okay. First off, let me clear all this shit. Jesus Christ. Ah! Um, fucking Breen. God bless. Breen bless. Um, Yeah, yeah, ludicrous. We all, we all feel that. We all, we all understand each other, ludicrous. There's no even need to elude. We get it. We get it. We all understand it. Like, yeah. Um, I don't know, Joey John. I don't know. Um. I fucking skeptic don't, you know, yeah. Oh, cat, yeah. Yeah, I don't, you know, I, I don't have any pets anymore just because I can't watch another animal die. Rumble, how do you not know what Breen is? Rumble, you need to attend bad movie night tonight. Yeah. Um, you need to attend Bad Movie Night tonight, Rumble. Yeah, that's that's. I'm just gonna make that a requisite for you. Um, it happens, Ludacris. It happens. Hey, Punk. Thank you kindly. Um, interesting, skeptic. Um, congratulations, maniac. Is Cheech and Chong too good for uh, Bad Movie Night? Hmm, that's actually a viable. That's a viable fucking. Yeah, we could we could talk about that maybe. Um. Yeah. Fair enough, Neon. Fair enough. Um. Yeah, I can't. I can't watch another fucking animal die. <laughs> can't do it. Um, yeah, that's, that's just, um, you know, I would, I would love to have a dog. I'd love to have a dog. Can't do it. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm not. Yeah. Um, Freddy Got Fingered is viable as well. Yeah. Freddy Got Fingered is viable as well. Um. Yeah. Yeah, exactly, cat. Yes, Google Eyes. Proud? Proud.
Yeah, don't ever call me daddy again, Googleizer. Um. Uh, there we go. Um. Actually, Gemma, what was you? Uh, it was above that, right? Okay. Yeah, like mm, exactly, cat like. Mm. Um, cool. I'll do it. Yeah, I'm, I'm okay with that. Oh, for fuck's sake. God damn it. I, I just, the, the Twitch interface sometimes, I swear. <laughs> um, okay, cool. Like, uh, my vaccine was worthless. No superpowers. I'm still hoping for my DNA rewrite. Joey, fucking, are you, you're telling me, man. You're telling me. Um, so, yeah, I think that's what we're going to do. I'm going to make this abrupt. It's Friday anyway. Um, I'm going to read out to Miss Nixa. It's, um, uh, Gemma's suggestion. Um, I'm going to jump over to Discord, um, and then we're going to eventually get to Bad Movie Night Friday. Bad Movie Night. I just can't come soon enough, but I got, I got shit to brew. We'll fucking hang out. We'll fuck, we'll talk. And for those of you who are new, I'm on five days a week. Monday, Wednesday, Friday, 5.30 p.m. Pacific. Tuesday, Thursday is 11.30 p.m. Pacific. You can catch me, you know, any of those other times. But Friday, we do Bad Movie Night on the Discord server. If you're not a Discord member and you want to be, link down below, link in chat, etc. But the link down below is probably going to be there longer. Um, and, yeah, we hang out and decompress. We all get a little buzzed on whatever you want to get buzzed on. Get fucking drunk, get high, and we watch bad movies and have a good time and decompress from a week of this. So, yeah. Um, yeah. I hope to see you guys again. So, fuck, I'm already drunk. All right. Well, got. We'll see you over there. Um, either way, catch you guys later.